Hey guys, Coach Keith Kepner here. Let's talk about one of the details within boxing. It's been said that the devil is in the details, but also God is also in the details as well. That means perfection or excellence. Let's talk about our hands with the gloves. A lot of people, when they start boxing, what do you automatically think when you think about getting in a fighting stance? They think about, if I don't have my gloves on, they think about balling the fists up. So yeah, ball your fists up and go, right? That term, ball your fists up make a fist like this. And then of course, when fighters pose for pictures, boxers pose for pictures, look at all the great greats when they're posing for pictures. Most of them, they're posing like this. Does that mean they fight like that with their hands tight? No, you can't fight many rounds, definitely not 12 or 15 rounds, like back in the day, with your fist balled up the whole time. Also, when you're squeezing your fists in your stance, think about it. You need to squeeze your fist at the end of the punch. So therefore, you're already tiring your forearms out and everything else off, and you're tight. And then think about it as well, you don't push punches, you throw punches. What's the difference between a push and a throw? A push is tight the whole time. A throw is loose and relaxed. You're focusing, you're focusing on getting acceleration and then squeezing tight at the end. Like the way that my father's mentor, the great Chuck Bodak said, it's like throwing a baseball on a guy's face, but at the end, you catch a baseball, all right? And also with your stance, you wanna focus on the way Chuck said, you're holding little eggs, all right? So imagine if you're just, and I literally, I literally did this when I boxed a couple times, just get a feel for it. Literally picked up two eggs, held them in my hand, move around a little bit to get that feel of what it feels like to just have your hands kind of cupped, but relaxed, all right? So same thing with the gloves. It's something that I pick up a lot with beginners and also kind of intermediates, people that are maybe have a few amateur fights, novice, things like that, is they'll have those fists still clenched up oftentimes and that's gonna slow down their punch. Why does it slow down their punch besides tire them out? It slows down their punch because if you have any tension going on with your bicep, which can happen when you squeeze, then there's gonna be a delay in the extensors, which is the tricep. So think about it. The, the antagonist muscle in that movement is your bicep pulling you back, all right? So if there's any tension there or anywhere that you don't need it that's fighting the extension, then the extension is gonna be slow and also take more energy, all right? So big notes on there to think about. Now let's talk about defensively. So I talked about in terms of throwing punches, in terms of not getting tired and exhausting yourself, because you want to be loose. And if you get loose, you go to the top, like the great Tony Sale said, two-time middleweight world champion. But with my hands being relaxed, also the benefit of that as well is defensively. Think about it. If I'm like this with my fists, they're not covering as much area. The more I open up my gloves, the more I'm protecting. And boxing is a game of inches. So you might say, oh, that only buys you half an inch. Well, sometimes it's half an inch that saves your life, all right? So you wanna have the hands sometimes opened up. Also, a couple ways to think about it. If I'm just blocking punches, one, I got more surface area, right? If my hand is open versus clenched down like that, see that? So one, I have more surface area. Two is, we don't necessarily teach this, I don't necessarily teach this, but it's not a horrible idea. You can put your hand here and it kind of breaks down a little bit versus if you had a tight fist against here, you are gonna absorb more of that impact. We teach typically, ideally, to block a little bit off the face, but again, this is better than getting hit, and if you have a little bit of space, it's a little better than if you have it clenched all the way up against your face. One thing to consider, but again, big note on that though. Look at great defensive fighters. Look at guys like Winky Wright, world champion. He had his gloves and then those pro gloves, and he could open it real wide, and so he had those suckers wide open, big coverage, and the more you close it down, the less coverage you have, all right? And if you look at any of your favorite pro fighters, Watch your hands very closely. They're not clinching it. Even Mike Tyson was not clinching his hands in his stance, all right? Because he wouldn't have lasted all those rounds and been able to throw with that power at the end of his punch. Now also, another big note is something that we're very big about, which is catching of the jab, catching of straight shots, all right? So if you're catching straight shots, you want to open up that hand to catch a straight shot. Why do you want to open up that hand? Again, more surface area, because if I collapse this sucker down, you see that? A little bit more exposed, but also if they hit a little bit high on here with a fist that catch, and there's any sweat or anything like that, Vaseline, whatnot, that sucker's gonna slide right over and still hit you, all right? Now, of course, like we know boxing, that's not necessarily a clean punch, all right? So it might not score you, but it's still gonna control your head, disrupt you, and cause some damage. So you don't wanna be here with it as you catch. I see so many people make that mistake. They catch you with the ball of fist, and again, you're tightening up your fist. You should be only tightening up your fist when you're throwing a punch. And if you're throwing enough punches, this is gonna be way too tiring to do this and to try to throw a punch, all right? Also, your timing of your countering is harder too. Think about it, if I have a clenched fist here and there's tension here on my block or whatever, my catch, 
and then after that, I try to shoot, that punch is gonna be muted, it's gonna be more like a push and not a snap. Why do we want a snap? Because physiologically in the brain, what causes a concussion? When the brain bounces in the skull, jars in the skull, and that is gonna occur for more of that snap, of that squeeze, of that end, that turnover, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, versus a just push, right? Because you can push my head all day long, and yeah, it's gonna wreck my neck up, and it's gonna be annoying and control my body, right? We'll do all those things but it's not gonna knock me out. It's not gonna knock me out unconscious, all right? Which again, you want your punches to be able to do that. Also, if you're trying to push people around, that's a lot of freaking energy like I touched on earlier, all right? So focus on opening up the glove to catch your punches, to block your punches. It's gonna make your counters faster. That's one thing I've noticed with a lot of our fighters is that as they're coming along, if someone's having trouble countering, it's probably because when they're blocking and defending, they're actually clinching. And so therefore there is a delay for them to throw and return versus a more relaxed block and defense. You can't have relaxation and defend and deflect the punch with the hand and then that gets a faster counter off of that. Try it, if you haven't already, trust me, it will work and you'll be a believer when you start utilizing it. Cause I see a change in people's ability to counter once they learn to keep their fists relaxed while they're blocking punches. All right, now the last note that I want to talk on is the practicality. Okay, so think about this. With the, with the amateur boxing gloves and the pro boxing gloves, right? Pro boxing gloves, you have the lace-up. Benefit of the lace-up is you get to really tie that sucker down tight. Think about lacing up your shoes versus, um, you know, strapping your shoes on. It's a difference. The lace is a lot tighter and you can make it tighter. And then also you put tape over that in pros. So now that glove is really secured and locked on. So you can open that sucker up and down as much as you want and it's not gonna do what I know annoys a lot of folks and annoyed me when I box, the slide up, right? Cause right now as I do this, this is sliding up, all right? Uh, with, with amateur boxing, you have, again, you, you gotta wrap in the glove, things like that, and that strap can be pretty tight. And it's a smaller glove, so it's a little bit more malleable sometimes, but it can be a little bit of a challenge with the glove sliding up. That's why, when you're boxing, when you're competing, you wanna make sure to have your coach hold that glove so that you can press down all the way, push down, get that hand all the way nice and super, super deep, deeper than I can do just by myself like, like this right now. And then once it's in there, close the fist tight, strap around the wrist tight, and that's how you can get a good fitting form that will allow you to open and close your hand without worrying about the glove sliding too much. It can still slide, but not too much. Uh, and then the secondary thing is in terms of training, like in terms of sparring, right? Again, like I'm saying, if I were to spar with these gloves right now, yeah, these are fine gloves to spar with, 16 ounces, got some padding on them, but as they are right now, if I just strap myself up, there's gonna be a little bit of moving as I open up the gloves and things like that. It's gonna make it a little challenging. That's where, like when I was boxing, my coach would always give me a good old strap of tape around my gloves, some duct tape, because that's super cheap, but whatever that does destroy the, the fabric or the, uh, the appearance of the glove. But you get that glove in deep like I'm talking about, get it in there, strap it tight, and then have your coach put some tape around it super tight as well, and that hopefully keeps it on there. So now you don't have to worry about trying to grip and keep your glove on, because that's sometimes a symptom of that is people feel like their gloves are sliding off, and they feel like that kind of grip them to keep them on. So that's just something to consider. It could be a limitation in implementing this, but, when you do implement this into your training, focus on keeping those hands nice and relaxed. That is what is gonna lead to massive success. You're gonna be a faster boxer. You're gonna be able to hit harder. You're also gonna be able to last longer. And you're also gonna be able to counter way more effectively. A lot of phenomenal benefits. So when you shadow box, focus on having those hands lightly open. They don't have to be splayed out. Just slightly open like that, like your whole little leg, like great Chuck Bodak said. And here, and at the end, squeeze tight. And again, to warm up, if you want to warm up, warm up, don't worry about squeezing at the end, just focus on being relaxed. But then I recommend for you work on getting a little bit of that timing of that squeeze. So you get that pop right at the end of the turnover, right at the end of the punch, and that's what's gonna maximize that pop in that jar, which shakes the brain and the skull. And if you're fortunate, you place your shot correctly, and you put your body behind your punch, it can lead to a knockdown or even a knockout. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe. Watch out for the next one. Keep training. Get after it, guys.